Proxmox V, the most popular open source virtualization platform, has just released its latest version, Proxmox VE 8.0. In this video, I'll guide you through the step by step installation tutorial to get you up and running with the most powerful open source virtualization platform, Proxmox. Let's dive into this right away. So, if you go to proxmox.com, new Proxmox VE 8.0. This is the major release of open source virtualization platform. So what is Proxmox virtualization platform? Proxmox virtual environment is all about compute, network and storage in a single solution, which is a complete open source server management platform for enterprise virtualization. It tightly integrates KVM hypervisor and Linux containers, which is called LXC, software defined storage and network functionalities on a single platform. With the integrated web-based user interface, you can manage VMs and containers, high availability for cluster and integrated disaster recovery tools for ease. The enterprise features and 100% software-based focus makes Proxmox V a preferred choice to virtualize your IT infrastructure, optimize existing resources and increase efficiencies with the minimal expenses. You can easily virtualize even the most demanding Linux and Windows application workload, dynamically scale computing and storage as your needs grow, ensuring that your data center adjusts for the future growth. So let me talk about some of the features of Proxmox VE. First of all, Proxmox VE is a server virtualization platform built on Debian GNU or Linux open source and freely available built on kernel based virtualization machine or KVM. Then container based virtualization is also available where you can have the Linux containers which is easy to deploy. If I talk about the management, it has central management using web user interface. If you are an advanced user, you can use command line tool to get a better control over your virtualization environment. Then Proxmox VE is a mobile app where you can perform various tasks whether it is starting and stopping or checking the status of that and so on. So you can also do the live migration of your virtual machines from one server to another server if you are using clusters. REST API will definitely help you to integrate with third party management tools for custom hosting environment and so on. So role based administration is also there. You can also connect it with the authentication servers like PAM, LDAP, Microsoft Active Directory, OpenID and so on. A multi-node Proxmox VE cluster enables you to create high availability virtual servers, which means that you can have the load balancing, migrate the machines from one server to another. You can have the bridge networking. Each host can have up to 4094 bridges. So this is a great flexibility when it comes to bridge network in the Proxmox virtual environment. I have explained you in detail how the networking works in the Proxmox virtual environment. Then I talk about storage. So storage has various storage types within the network storage. You can use iSCSI you can use LVM, you can use Samba server or CIFS, Ceph storage, CephFS and so on. And then if I talk about backup, you can use Proxmox backup server and you can also create the schedule backup or you can use even the storage backup server. There are various type of servers available. Proxmox also has the Proxmox V firewall. You can also use the distributed firewall and all of that. I'll explain you all of these in detail, but let us now start installing Proxmox V. So our first step is to start downloading it. Proxmox virtual environment, Proxmox mail gateway, Proxmox backup server, and here Proxmox VE 8.0 installer. I can click here to Proxmox virtualization environment, ISO images. So we have multiple options here. Step-by-step -step installation guide I have provided for 6.4 also and 7.4 also. But let us delve into the Proxmox VE 8.0 and download. To make a bootable flash disk or bootable USB stick, I need to make using the software called Blaine Etcher. It helps you to simply choose the ISO image, select the flash disk and flash. And here, this is the latest release. So I'll be just clicking here to download. Here is the Blaine Etcher. All right, so here Proxmox VE 8.0-2, the latest release. We'll use Blaine Etcher to create the bootable flash disk using this particular ISO image. Simply click here, it will open Billion Azure software, select the file and here is Proxmox VE. Now you will choose the select target disk, USB flash disk and click select. And now you simply need to click on flash. So flash is completed now. Right. So now I'll be taking this flash disk to the hardware and I'll put it into hardware. I'll restart the server and now I'll show you step by step installation of this. I will just bring the screen into my screen and then I'll show it to you here. Just wait for the moment. 
All right, so here is the Proxmox VE and here you can use the graphical user interface. You can install using console or even you can have the advanced option. I will recommend you to start using the graphical user interface. Click agree and here is the target hard disk in case you want to install it on any other hard disk. You can choose it from here and here I can choose country and time zone and keyboard layout and I'll choose the password, my email management interface so in case you have multiple network cards so i'll be choosing default interface here i'll be choosing proxmox.amjadali.com and here and i need to check my network address here let me check the ip address of my system so ip config and here i'll be looking for find str ipv4 with the r slash to restrict it only to our ipv4 so ipv4 and here you can see my ip address is 192.168.100.227 which is in the same range so i'll be continuing the install here so click next and it will create the partition and it will start installing let us wait for the installation to complete So I'll wait for my hardware server to restart, remove USB flash disk here and let us wait for the server to start. Here you go. You can see here, I can access the server with the IP address 192.168.100.2 on port 8006. Try to access this server 192.168.100.2 and colon 8006 root and my password so in proxmox data center you can of course see the proxmox node which is the main server it will show you all the details here and then here is the local network so local volume manager so depending upon what type of storage you are using so i have explained you storage also in another video so you can go through that and you can understand that how the proxmox storage works local network also i have explained you in detail that how the network configuration can be done i can go here back to proxmox and here I can click on network. So here you will see network bridge. So right now one network bridge is there. So you can edit this bridge in case you want to make the changes to the IP address from here. So it uses the Ethernet card. So it means that when you create the VMBR, which is of course your virtual switch, this virtual switch or Linux bridge is connected to your physical network card using this. If you have multiple network cards, for example, right now I have ETH zero in case you have another network card also so you can create here with the linux bridge and here you can give it a name like for example if it was eth1 so you could do that but right now it is not available of course it will not allow us because it could not find the bridge port eth1 so right now i'm using only one network card for the purpose of this demo but in case you have multiple so you can configure multiple virtual linux bridges within your proxmox server notes you can add related to the server that this is you can store all the documentation here and then in shell of course you can access it using the shell command suppose if you want to access the networks i'll just type in network and interfaces here the vmbr0 is created and vmbr0 is using the inet static ip address and bridge port is eth0 so the same configuration that we saw in the gui same configuration is here also so now i'll just update it apt get update and here it will look for the updates which are available and app get upgrade so right now zero update is available certificates in case you want to attach any ssl certificate here dns server right now it is using the local dns server in case you want to use the other dns server and this way you can update the dns configuration host name of course host name is already defined here in case you want to make the changes so you can make the changes to it and you can reboot the server so in case you want to delay start on boot you can do that so this is the server time right now system logs so all the system log you can see here here is important aspect which is update the enterprise repository is also available by default you can disable the enterprise repository so i'll simply click here and disable the enterprise repository and reload so i'll go back here to shell and app and get update 
and now it will be reading from the repository of course enterprise repository is not available here thing is up to date now the firewall is available here so you can add the rules here depending upon what you want to accept and what you want to reject which will help you to have a better control so whether you want to disable the firewall you can do that also here is the log of the firewall here in disks you will see all the disks which are attached to it so same configuration which is available in 7.4 which i have already explained you the disk details are here and here if i talk about the directory in case you are using the directory storage or in the network storage so you can attach it and zfs in case you are using zfs ceph storage the ceph configuration is also here once the ceph is installed you can check that all of these are related to ceph storage i'll explain you that in a different video replication in case you are doing the replication task history and then finally the subscription in case you are using enterprise subscription you can upload the subscription key from here and then you will be able to use an enterprise subscription for enterprise upgrade and so on so this was all about the user interface of the proxmox ve you can choose from the server view or the folder view or you can see in the pool view i usually like the server view in order to sign out and sign in case you want to use two-factor authentication you can configure that as well you can reset the password restart the server and here in color theme right now i'm using dark theme which is auto you can change the light theme but usually i use the dark theme it gives less strain to eyes and finally here the language in case you want to use any other language so you can choose the language settings from here i use english so this was just to give you an idea that how you can get started with proxmox let's move to the next video of proxmox virtual environment